Several members of this senior class appeared in our 1989 production of Harvey. They may recall the comment of Elwood P. Dowd, the gentleman who went through life accompanied by an imaginary white rabbit. Mr. Dowd philosophized, in this world, you must be oh so smart or oh so pleasant. For years, I was smart. I recommend pleasant. <clears throat> well, we recommend both. It's so hard to capture my relationship with Peter. Faculty member. My colleague. Trusted advisor. Counselor. Confidant. Who has the biggest heart. He's also nice on the golf course. Easy to talk to from the get-go. I don't think there's a person he's talked to that he hasn't had a meaningful connection with. He walks his talk in every way. One of my life's heroes. He believed in me. Seeing that light on in Peter's office means that we're home. We just all stood up a little bit straighter when Mr. Bachman walked by. <laughs> my first memory of Peter Bachman was that fall of my seventh grade year when he got up in front of a full auditorium uh, in Norris Auditorium and performed in a bucket of noodles. I remember thinking, this is someone who cares about students. If my husband were a play, it would definitely be The Tempest with Pete as Prospero. He knows everything that's going on. Um, and he has a hand in everything, but you'd never notice it. He creates storms that cause shipwrecks that bring people to his island. And then he provides experiences that help them grow. He's the one doing the magic. When Molly and I first drove out here, I thought we'd be here about two or three years. I had assured my mother in North Carolina when we left uh, that we would come back east. That was 40 years ago. Growing up as teachers, we're just a nice, tight, snug little group. Our little Robbie running around the sideline of the football field. So our families grew up. I never bought that there would be a moat between a personal life and a professional life. The faculty is his family, it's my family, the students are his family, much of them are my family as well. We were so excited when Peter became headmaster because we knew that Pete had the, the same kind of values that we all had. He has always very compellingly and very sincerely made it clear that the work of the faculty, the quality of the faculty is the school's greatest asset. We're encouraged to constantly be collaborating with one another and to share our ideas. I think it's really extraordinary that Peter meets with every member of the staff every year and has a really frank conversation. I've tried to drive a truck through the unapproachable perception. I was always going to teach. I was always going to go to a lot of events. I was always going to try to have fun. Something that I've been able to take into my own professional career um, has been his ability to identify what it is that people do best, allow them to do that every day, uh, and then recognize them for it. He brings teachers in and then gives them the running room and the trust to create their own version of that sacred space in the classroom. Peter has the ability to pull things out of people they didn't even know were there. Now, Peter were a period in history, he'd probably be a progressive era. As much as he likes tradition, he does like to see change done in a measured fashion. In the early years, we were pursuing best practices. We wanted to do well by other people's standards. I think as we grew in institutional self-confidence, we sort of said, well, why can't we set the standard? All these things that I think make us not only good professionals someday down the line, or college students even, but with good people. He really brought that mentality to this school, the mentality that the day doesn't end when the bell rings. We believe that human development is equal to intellectual development and are committed to pursuing both at the same time. It's an incredible place for children to transition from being children to becoming young adults. What gives Peter the greatest joy is, I think, teaching, bringing people along with an idea. He was a headmaster who always taught. He loved seeing light bulbs flash on in the minds of young people. And you love to see where those kind of light bulbs would carry them later in life. He believes in the idea that it's not just one teacher spoon-feeding knowledge to a classroom. Just sort of a moderator and a guide instead of a, a lecturer. My favorite moments in the classroom are when we're in flow, when 
No one knows if there's a clock in the room when we are just into the text, into the conversation, and into one another. My kids both said that Peter's class was the best class they had here at Prep. He wanted to be in great books. You wanted him to come into your class, and when he did, you wanted to participate. You wanted to share your ideas with him. I think it was in the second year that I developed uh, the good life as the ultimate project and the final paper. He started off the class. The very first thing he says is, uh, what is the good life? Somehow, just the way he says it, something will click. Initially, it was a foray into utopian literature, but then after that, uh, it really became just uh, our own personal exploration of, of ideals, and actually that was the first time we ever had to ask ourselves, uh, what is it that we really want out of life? This classroom, inside here, we're a community of whatever, you know, 16, 17, um, with a shared goal and shared trust. Peter understood that the way to move a community is by creating shared bonds and by creating a communal vision. We're focused on doing what's best for the community. Seniors and seventh graders are passing each other and they know each other and they say hello and many kids will talk about the seniors they knew when they were younger. We're not rooting for other students to do poorly because that will make us look better. We're all working together towards a common goal. It all comes from Peter. He doesn't look at you like you're a student or you're a faculty or you're a parent. He looks at each person for who they are and how he can relate to them. This is a school with a heart, that's the difference. It's academically incredible, but the compassion and care for the student, who they are as human beings, that's because of Peter Bachman. That's so central to the DNA of Flint Ridge Prep now, the sense that people come first and relationships come first. Honesty, generosity, uh, kindness, uh, respect uh, have become internalized because of their use, because of ritual. He would do things to bring the community together. The family barbecue. Book days. The mock trial. Honor code signing ceremony, a junior parent dinner, Santa party, senior trip. Schools offer symbolic structure and meaning to people's lives with their rituals. He'll show up at games and performances and events. This is a man who wants to stay connected. Rather than fame, rather than riches, rather than honor, give me truth. And so I ask students to erase the word truth and substitute their own. Give you what? Is your word truth? Is it fame? Is it riches? Is it honors? Is it love? What's your one non-negotiable that you start with? My non-negotiable is love. And I love Flint Ridge Prep. My graduation was, was only the beginning of a new, a new relationship with Flint Ridge Prep. Prep for life means families. It wouldn't be a speech if I didn't talk about our son Rob. He's become kind of a metaphor for the whole prep experience. My son's graduation was maybe the single biggest highlight uh, of my time at prep. You know, how he navigated being the son of a head is, I think, an interesting question. The first couple of years were uh, a little tough, you know, with my middle school years, which is tough to begin with. I remember when he would have me drop him off a block away from a, a middle school dance. The magic of prep is the way the faculty impacts the kids, the cumulative effect of that over time. We definitely saw that in Rob's growth and development. By the 11th and 12th grade, when he began to mature, when I began to teach his friends, when I actually would lecture in classes that, that he was a member of, it became a huge bond between us. He's fostered in me and others uh, a willingness to take chances and to explore. That shared knowledge of prep and experience was very important to Rob and to Pete. One of the truly unsung heroes, I think, is Molly. I call her the first mom. I think she was a nice compliment to my dad in style and temperament. Generous, you know, with her time, advice, and also just willingness to, to build and maintain community. When I was offered the job in 1991, the chair said to me, we, do, we decided on Molly six months ago. We had to figure out whether we wanted you. 
Peter meets challenges by um, being the embodiment or this balance of head and heart. He always believes there's good. He always believes that the situation can be better, that we can heal, that we can grow. We've dealt with a whole array of things. We're not just talking about human values here in our school. We're talking about how we've held a school together. I would really like to thank the teachers who have been leading us in all our online education and uh, the tech and administrative and staff that have all supported those efforts. Mostly though, I'd like to thank you students. Even though this is a complicated time of, with some disappointments, that you're making the most out of it. There is a future of this school and it, it will be great, but as someone who was a student here, it is really hard to imagine this place without him. I think as he exits, that collaboration building speaks volumes. It's a statement of student engagement. He's lived a life of engagement. His legacy will be in you know, the hearts and minds and the relationships that exist on campus. He's built this really robust community that I think will continue to be prep because he built it so well. At the end of the Tempest, Prospero, who has had magical powers, is deciding to renounce his magic. My advice for Pete moving forward is, don't renounce your magic. Peter, here we go. You're gonna start your next adventure. Thank you for mentoring me. Believing in me from our first interview. Bringing me to the school that I love so much. You've given me so many opportunities to uh, be my best. Opportunities that you've given me, the opportunities you've given to my kids. Your willingness to teach me as a student uh, and as a teacher myself. Your guidance, your headship. What you did for me as a student uh, and what you've done for me as a parent. For everything that you've given to me and my family. All the amazing times we've had. Thank you so much for the 40 years of making me a better person. The incredible decades and be picky about your next adventures because I know there will be many. It has been the greatest joy of our life to be able to be involved at prep. I feel so much better for having been at this school and feel ready for college just because of all the things that you've given me. Thank you for bringing me to your island. Thank you. To quote your favorite work in all literature. Our revels now are ended. And these are actors, as I foretold you, who are all spirits and are melted into air, into thin air. And, like the baseless fabric of this vision, the cloud-capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself shall dissolve and, like this insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made on and our little life is rounded in a sleep. <laughs>